asking a more fundamental question. Let me bring in Pinky Anand and Dr. Ranganathan and Mr. Hegre, and of course, Aman Lekhi. Let me begin with you, Dr. Anand Ranganathan. You're not the lawyer on the panel, but as a layperson, do you have a problem with this act? If so, why? Uh, good evening, Rahul, and good evening uh, to my fellow panelists. It's a real um, exalted panel of, uh, I'm surrounded by six lawyers and I feel guilty already. So please pardon if I disagree. I disagree with my first two esteemed panelists already. I don't believe this is a, a, a religious social issue. This is a, entirely a legal issue. And uh, I, I disagree with the earlier speaker about the definition of secularism. What he meant was pluralism, not secularism. But Rahul, to come back to this issue, and I have three or four points to make, and I, I really love this, this whole setup of Converse. It really gives a lot of gravitas to the issues, and you know, people are discussing this, uh, uh, you know, like the dust of thoughts, uh, allowing the dust of thoughts to settle. Uh, Rahul, sadly, I have to say this, that history written by the victors is peddled by the vanquished and we remain vanquished. To me, one of the most barbaric legislations ever enacted in India is the 1991 Places of Worship Act. But in 2019, the virtue signaling Supreme Court in its Ayodhya judgment willfully ratified this act that obligates maintaining all religious places as they were on August 15, 1947. Historical injustice of Kashi can now never be addressed unless Parliament overrides it. Rahul, a legal recourse to correct historical injustices cannot be denied in a democracy. And please, this is not a Hindu or a religious issue at all. I, as a Darwinian atheist, demand the abrogation of the Places of Worship Act. Rahul, if a mosque had been demolished by a Hindu king and a temple built on it, I, a kafir and an atheist for whom Islam sanctions death penalty, would have fought for the rights of Muslims to legally get back their mosque. I would have stood with them. Because to me, the mark of civilization is this unquenchable thirst to demand justice for your ancestors. Baki hai kya zindagi mein? To correct a historical wrong. For that exemplifies a continuity, an idea, a memory that can never be erased, that is worth fighting for and preserving. It makes justice greater than the sum of its parts. And that is why Civilizations are not fleeting like empires. That is why, Rahul, history is a medicine. Catharsis, a cure. If an image could speak a million words, it would be that of the Nandi, waiting patiently for 400 years for his lord to emerge and for this historical injustice to be corrected. From Somnath to Kashi Vishwanath, these injustices have deliberately been made visible as though to lionize the debasement to celebrate the humiliation, if you will. And the irony is that the same people who have taught us this, drilled this self-loathing in us, these same people want others to fight historical injustices around the world. They condemn barbarians of the West hither to worship like the Confederacy generals, Rhodes, Churchill, Pizarro, Murray, Colston, Leopold. They celebrate their roads and buildings being renamed, their statues being brought down. But here in India, this same set eulogizes barbarians like Aurangzeb. Finally, I'll just 30 seconds. To show you the extent of the conceit, let me, if I may, read out to you a passage from the 2019 Ayodhya judgment where my lords exult and willfully ratify this act. Quote, the Places of Worship Act imposes a bar on the institution of fresh shoots or legal proceedings. The only exception, other than Babri Masjid Ram Janam Bhumi case, is in the case of suits, appeals, or proceedings pending at the commencement of the law on the ground that conversion of a place of worship had taken place after 15th August 1947. The Places of Worship Act is thus a legislative intervention which preserves non-retrogression as an essential feature of our secular values. The Places of Worship Act is intrinsically related to the obligations of a secular state. It reflects the commitment of India to the equality of all religions. Above all, this act is an affirmation of the solemn duty which was caused upon the state to feature and preserve the protect equality of all faiths as an essential constitutional value. The law speaks to our history and to the future of the nation, unquote. Really, I'm sorry, but this law airbrushes our history and it destroys our future. 